everything inside me. William Cobbett said. Nothing is so well calculated to produce a death-like torpor in the country, as an extended system of taxation and a great national debt. This is because money is created out of debt in a one-to-one -one increase in public debt. The national debt is $20 trillion. That means the 234 million US Americans would have to pay approximately $62,000 each to pay it off. This includes babies, children, poor people, and homeless people. There are even those who claim that it's mathematically impossible to pay off the debt. And almost every country is in debt to every other country. It's the height of insanity. As former governor of the Federal Reserve Mariner Eccles said, if there were no debts in our money system, there wouldn't be any money. Federal Reserve notes are not redeemable in gold, silver, or any other commodity, and receive no backing by anything. The notes have no value for themselves. All money is fiat money. A dollar bill is a dollar bill because everyone agrees it's a dollar bill. The dollar bill is not lawful money, but rather legal tender. Money used to be backed by a gold standard, which meant the government had $100 worth of gold in a vault from which they made a $100 bill that went out into the market, though even gold in la his value because we've all agreed since time immemorial that it's valuable. However, they moved away from gold years ago, so now we must take the government's word for it that the note is worth $100. The bill itself is just an IOU note, made from thin air, based on debt, and laundered by the government. Even the debt issue discussed in the first bullet is based on nothing, and is nothing more than a financial concept financiers agree on. The debt isn't actually there. But since we all just go along with it, it affects us through inflation and devaluation, and the sky is falling knee-jerk reactions to money meaning something only because we give it meaning. Money is little more than a cartoon in the brain that we're addicted to watching. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Gandhi said. Live simply so that others may simply live. You're not supposed to know how to live off the grid, because then you can't be controlled by the government. The more self-sufficient you are, the less money the corporations can make off you. The more rain water you catch, the less you'll need to pay the water companies. The more windmills you build and solar panels you erect, the less you'll need to pay the electric companies. The more composting toilets you install, the less you'll have to pay plumbing companies. The more gardening you do, the less you'll have to pay someone else for your food. In short, the more independent you become, the less codependent you will be on the state. And the state doesn't like that, because they like your money way more than they like your freedom. Aldous Huxley writes. Armaments, universal debt, and planned obsolescence, those are the three pillars of Western prosperity. Speaking of making money off you, planned obsolescence is a way for companies to keep making money off you, by capitalizing on your consumerist tendencies. Let's face it, we're a nation of consumers with Big Macs for brains and iPhones for hearts. We need our fix and we need it fast, and we are willing to fill all the landfills in the world, and then some, to get it. Planned obsolescence is designed into a product to encourage the consumer to buy the next upgrade. 
Everything from toasters to automobiles, microwaves to cell phones, are prone to planned obsolescence by greedy companies that know you will come back for more, no matter how many times your things 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 fall apart. Ludwig von Mises said, the state is nothing more nor less than a bandit gang writ large. As if police brutality, extortion, and overreach of power weren't enough, unscrupulous police officials have been manipulating the deeply flawed federal and state civil asset forfeiture laws that give them permission to seize, keep, or sell any property allegedly involved in a crime. The key word is allegedly. Because most of the time, property is taken without even being charged with a crime. That's crazy. Originally meant to be used on large-scale criminal organizations, it is now used almost entirely on individuals, ruining people's lives over petty crimes. More and more police departments are using forfeiture to benefit their bottom lines. It's less about fighting crime, and more about profit. John Oliver did an excellent piece on the matter that gets right at the heart of the issue. Edward Abbey writes. Since few men are wise enough to rule themselves, even fewer are wise enough to rule others. When taxation is forced, one cannot say they live in a free country. When taxation is not optional, the country forcing the tax is not free. Bottom line. If one does not pay their taxes, in such a country, they are threatened with violence or prison if they don't pay. That is point-blank extortion. And since it is being done by an authoritarian government, it is naked tyranny. If one feels like paying taxes, then they should feel free to pay. That's fair, because that's voluntary. But if the state is using its monopoly on violence to get money out of you, that is not fair, that is extortion. It really is that simple. If freedom is primary then voluntarism is paramount. The use of state services built off taxes is an entirely different matter with entirely different solutions, and is an irrelevant red herring to the issue at hand. Louis Brandeis, Supreme Court Justice, said, We may have democracy, or we may have great wealth concentrated in the hands of a few, but we can't have both. In our world, money is power. Money concentrated in the hands of a few, means power concentrated in the hands of a few. And since power tends to corrupt if it goes unchecked, the people must be free to check it, lest tyranny prevail. But because of an overreaching militarized police force, the people are not free to check it. And here we are, slipping into tyranny. If we lived within a horizontal democracy, we would have a better chance at being free. No masters, no rulers, and hence, no chance for power to become concentrated in the hands of a few. Easier said than done, sure, but nothing worth doing was ever easy. As it stands, it is impossible to live freely within an oligarchic plutocracy. The plutocrats will simply continue buying up power by creating oppressive laws and legal extortion rackets that keep the people without wealth and power in a permanent state of poverty and powerlessness. Add to that the use of lobbyists, and a fiat currency based on debt, and you have a nation of hoodwinked debt slaves, under the delusion that they live in a free democratic republic. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.